From the police state to tectonic plates, touch, sense, and tattoo take the temperature of tyranny on Freedom Frequency 1871, coming to you live now. This is America. We have founding fathers that wrote a constitution that we haven't lived by in 142 years. Were they serious when they said they planned on owning the weather by 2025? You guys seen what's going on outside your door lately? Need I remind you? This is America! Are y'all gonna allow it to be Russia? Hello, and welcome in to Freedom Frequency 1871. This is your host, Dutch Sense. I've got Tattooed here with me, and our special guest host is back, Chrissy Sumer. You guys there? I am. I think Chrissy's muted for a minute. Okay. No problem. No problem. Welcome into the show, guys. I hope you all had a good week. Today is the 21st of February, Friday, and 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I want to thank you for tuning in. Now, last week, we had an awesome show. Information Phil uh, scored the video now and placed on YouTube and Daily Motion. It received a fairly hefty response online from my viewers and Tat's viewers and Chrissy's viewers. Um, we covered the topic of weather modification, radio frequency, directed energy weapons, climate change. It was a really interesting show. And if you didn't hear it, you can go over to our main page. And check that out. It's on all of our sites, so you can just check any one of our websites, and you will find a link to last week's show covering specifically HARP, the U.S. program uh, of directed energy weapons, lasers, high-powered microwaves. And um, we got a response, believe it or not, nine hours after our show aired, Associated Press running a full story on directed energy weapons and specifically the lasers we were talking about and showing in our broadcast the night before. And we put that out just to, you know, kind of a hat tip, letting us know that people are listening and people are taking note. Um, in the last week, after last week's show, I'm going to go into some news that happened, Earth Changes news-wise, uh, that happened right after we got off the air last week or while we were on the air. Um, a series of earthquakes struck in the United States. An earthquake, st- uh, earthquake swarm struck in central Oklahoma, and a 4.2 struck in South Carolina. Now, this is actually a big development because this was forecast by myself. Now, earthquake forecasting is very dubious, and you can't really nail it down as to where specifically it's going to happen, but you can look at general regions and know where to watch. And we were watching the East Coast. East Coast got hit, watching Oklahoma, Oklahoma swarming away, and Yellowstone, watching Yellowstone, it's also experiencing an earthquake swarm. And if you are curious as to why that's occurring, you can go watch my earthquake updates. Um, Tonight, we're going to be going back into directed energy weapons, weather modification via frequency, but we're going to be talking about our enemies, quote unquote, Russia, China, and even our allies, the Europeans. But this news on the earthquakes, um, to our south, there was a 4.2 that occurred in Cuba and a 6.5 that occurred in Barbados. Now, this is heavy movement to see in the United States, and so that's why I'm bringing it to your attention now. Go watch my earthquake updates or just go check the earthquake links yourself, and maybe the time for developing an earthquake plan might be in order for you if you live in the United States. Midwest, East Coast, good idea just to have it, just in case. You might not need it. You may never need it. But when you do need it, that's the time to have the plan and have it ready to go. Um, Last week, also after our show, Tattooed received somewhat of a response from the scientific community or establishment regarding his North Pole, well, what do you want to call it, Tat? A debacle, fiasco? Uh, Tat has shown repeatedly now that the North Pole ice concentrations are 100% extending from Canada all the way to Russia. 
Now this is verified through multiple EDU links. You guys can verify this yourself. But never mind the facts, the mainstream media came out guns blazing, referencing something that Tat showed in his video only. They brought up the year 1979. Now, why would they bring up the year 1979? Why would the mainstream media issue multiple stories referring to 1979 all of a sudden? Well, it's because Tattoot's video, he went back to 1979, started there, picked the year randomly. It went back, but he could have gone back further. No, However, it could well, 79 was as far as the, the chart got pictures for. I could have went back and looked, you know, at the seen data. the the dialogue, but I couldn't see the photos. I tried, but that's as far as I could go. 79 was as far back as I could go uh, with a with a photo. Now, you could go back further with charts, but now if there's photo, you know, there's any photos there, I don't know for sure if they're, you know, I could find them. I didn't, I didn't look hard enough, let's put it that way. <clears throat> And it's really interesting because he could have gone back, like he said, gone through charts, gone through previous more information. However, they, the people who are responding, the scientists, they have access to data going all the way back. So the chances that they would pick the same year that you just picked are astronomically high. Their stories directly reference the ice pack being melted. North Pole melting, North Pole melting over and over again on multiple mainstream news sources this past week. And if you could see the link that we're showing, it's called Cryosphere Today. You guys can look it up yourself, EDU, and you will see the ice pack concentrations extend 100% from Canada to Russia right now, for sure, confirmed. Thus shooting a hole in the entire story that the mainstream media put out this past week. Um. So that's kind of what we're dealing with this climate change stuff. We're I do want to I do want to add one thing to that. It shows a lot of white on the photo, and underneath the chart where you look at it, underneath the chart, it says that the white, uh, the snow part, which would you know is just plain snow, uh, doesn't show in the earlier or the later video uh, later photos because they didn't have the technology at the time. That only happened like from the 2000 era, at the 2000, about the year 2000, where it, it actually started showing the, the white on the, the outer continents. But the ice concentration and the depth of the ice is <clears throat> a lot deeper now than it was in 79. There was a lot more pink in 79 than there is in the year 2014 the ice is a whole lot deeper it says purple they got a little bitty purple spot up there says 100 feet i'm thinking as dark as the purple is that it means it's more than 100 feet deep but go ahead dutch oh yeah confirmed it is and the ice pack going all the way across is at at the 100 percent level literally you can check the charts guys and you don't have to take our word for it. Again, this is not a matter of debate. It is a fact. It's, if you're going to debate facts, then you are not a skeptic. You are a doubter. Um, speaking of snow going across the northern hemisphere, northern lights appeared over New England yesterday. And there's pics from Mount Washington on the east coast with green northern lights reaching down into the lower 48. Now, this is the result of an incoming blast of solar particles due to multiple uh, right below M-class flares, and uh, that happens from time to time. Uh, that's just something that happened that was pretty cool to see that several of my viewers reported to me. And then it made the news the next day, of course. It was on Yahoo and AP. Um, also, storms, big-time storms, blew through the south and midwest last night. Also, going to all the way to the West Coast, massive winds blowing in in Southern California, just taking down trees, even blowing roofs off houses. And that was on, clear, on a clear night. Um, I brought up the earthquakes earlier. There was also in the news, and this you probably didn't hear about it. They're not going to be talking about it on CNN. A 4.2 struck Southwest England. Hmm? Southwest England, yes. And it's very rare. Don't normally see much earthquake activity uh, between England and Ireland, but there it is, a 4.2. Uh, 
Now, this earthquake activity that we saw in the U.S. and the earthquake activity that we're seeing over in Europe, uh, there's also a 5.0 that struck directly at the North Pole, north of Greenland. Something's going on earthquake-wise that we need to be prepared for, and that's going to require a full two-hour episode, again, that I'm going to have to go into at some point. But the earthquake activity at the North Pole could be a sign of magnetic activity because we have northern lights also happening at the same time that there's an earthquake coming down from the same area. Maybe they're related. Now, that takes us in to last week. Ionization, charged particles. We left off last week, and I got down to the bottom of page one. I hope the producer might be able to have um, this open, and we'll provide the link in the chat room for the HARP uh, want to prove it to a non-believer, here you go post. You guys can follow along with this just like last week. Now, last week, HARP, radio frequency, manipulation of the weather, directed energy weapons. I mean, it was a smorgasbord of information, and it was really hard for me to get through it all just in two hours. Um, at the bottom of this post, we left off right below these ionization stations that made it rain over 50 times in the Abu Dhabi desert. There is a NOAA, N-O-A-A, weather modification form. And this is where we're going to pick up tonight. We're going to go straight into us, United States, that is, our enemies, Russia and China, and our allies, let's just say the Europeans and Australians. I don't know if I'll be able to get through it all again this week, <laughs> but we're going to try. Now, this NOAA weather modification form is something that is a gold nugget for any weather modification researcher. I don't ever want to hear the U.S. government deny knowledge of weather modification because this form must be filled out by any company that's performing weather modification inside the United States. And I say company because not only is the U.S. military performing its own weather modification that we proved to you last week via owning the weather 2020, 2025 plans or HARP, or any one of these other programs that we showed you, that private sector is also doing weather modification. One of the companies I named last week doing weather modification using frequency, resonance technology, and they were called Aquies. Um, these other companies, now if we scroll down below the no weather modification form, which asks for where they're going to be spraying, where they're going to be doing the different weather modification activities, and what the results are, you'll see that the U.S. government has been involved directly in doing cloud seeding operations. Now, cloud seeding is something that I've been talking about now for years, but over the past several months now, cloud seeding's really come back into the picture due to false stories appearing on YouTube of plastic snow falling out of the sky. Um, this really brought cloud seeding back into the forefront to be talked about. Now, cloud seeding, slang term, chemtrails, which is fine to use. You can use the term chemtrails. Chemtrails just describes a lingering man-made cloud that comes out the back of an airplane. We don't know what kind of chemical makes it up, but we know it's not just water. Okay, So uh, there's some kind of chemical makeup in the cloud, thus the term chemtrail. And it's kind of stuck around and become a popular slang term. But the real science behind chemtrails is CCN, cloud condensation nuclei. And there's multiple ways to generate CCN. CCN is the building block to any raindrop. Mother Nature does it with a dust particle. Dust particle blows up off the ground, goes up into the air, collects water mo molecules, falls as a raindrop. They have figured out that ionization using radio frequency can make little ions that also attract water that condenses into a raindrop and falls. And the U.S. government is doing and has been doing Particulate matter spraying of silver iodide, let's say, small particles of silver iodide used via um, usually a spray apparatus of some kind, whether it's a flare or a nozzle, um, and they fly around different areas and do cloud seeding. And in this post, you'll see the USGS doing it over uh, the Medicine Bow National Reserve in, I think it's Wyoming, If you're, I used to live in Colorado, if you ever drive up to Yellowstone, you drive right through Medicine Bow. It's beautiful. Well, they're up there spraying silver iodide for snowpack enhancement. Now, you could look into the reasons why the USGS is involved, but it has to do with aquifer management, water authorities, USGS being involved, of course, 
uh, due to multiple tectonic issues uh, in the area with Yellowstone, Wyoming, of course, um, if they're going to be building any kind of heavy water reserve or filling an aquifer underground, of course, they're going to be consulting the USGS. Maybe even the USGS themselves would be doing some kind of aquifer management to maybe help with the super volcano that is swelling and rising in the area. There's all kinds of reports about that, by the way, online. That's not my conjecture. That's just me stating something that I've been reading over and over again in my inbox for the last several months. Now, below the USGS post are the companies. And these are just a few. There's a lot of companies doing this. Now, I'm going to read to you a couple of them, and then we're going to get into our enemies, okay? The other people that are doing this, the other corporations that are doing this. Now, these private corporations here are supposedly helping us. They're helping with um, trying to get more rain for our crops, okay? Um, also trying to help with building aquifers so we can have drinking water. So West Texas Weather Modification in Texas trying to help, according to their own words, you know, to help farmers and to help you so you can water your lawn. Weathermodification.com uh, is Weather Modification Incorporated has a, a website called weathermodification.com. You can go there and read about all their clients. You can read about their operations and their plans for the future. It's not to, nice to mess with another nature. But go ahead. I agree. Messing, once you start messing with mother nature, you can never stop. Once you direct the flow of a river, you're never going to stop trying to direct the flow of that river unless you want it to come back on you. And most people don't want that when it comes to a river. Do they want that with the weather? That's the question. Do you want to control the, the weather like we control a river? People don't have a problem with directing the flow of a river unless it comes over them. Then all of a sudden, everybody blames the Army Corps of Engineers for directing the flow of the river. But they have no problem using that water that's siphoned off from that redirection. It's a question you got to ask yourself. So these companies that are doing it are real people, private people, private companies, moms and dads, sons and daughters, making a profit, charging to do it. They're not doing it for free, guys. They're doing it on, on a dollar basis per acre. And that's per acre they're flying over or covering. So think about Texas, for instance, the millions of square acres that they are charging to spray on. Okay. Now, there's another company called Desert Research Institute. They are based out of uh, Reno. I think they're based out of Reno, Nevada. They are going to be holding a conference here in the coming spring where we're trying to get a reporter there to record and possibly ask questions. Now, why DRI? Why Desert Research Institute? A week ago, everybody heard about the drought in California. I know you did. If you didn't, you didn't have the news on. Everybody talking about the drought. And then a record snowfall fell at Lake Tahoe, Northern California, Northeastern California. Record snowfall. Huge. Didn't hear about that very much on the news, did you? Now, what caused a record snowfall during a drought? Guess who's involved? DRI, Desert Research Institute, doing the cloud seeding over the Sierra Nevadas at the time, and they're bragging it up. And there they are on their YouTube page, which they have one, DRI, Desert Research Institute, has their YouTube page, where they're showing a Weather Channel clip where the Weather Channel is giving them all kinds of praise. It's a fluff piece. But guess what they show in the piece? They show drones that they're using. Drones. Yes. No pilot involved except for in a control room. They have it outfitted with all kinds of flares on the back of it. Now, guess what? DRI has another video on their YouTube page where they've just been approved to do drone testing, new next generation drone testing across the state of Nevada. Nevada has opened up its doors to drone tests, obviously because of all the government experiments that go on there. And DRI is spearheading the effort. Now, what are they going to be doing with all these drones? Of course we know what they're going to be doing. Weather modification using drone. It could be even computer controlled at some point. There might not even need to be a pilot in the control room, folks. And this is just talking about the spraying of particulate matter. And this takes us in to the next page on the post, which is going to get into our enemies, the other countries, 
the countries that could maybe possibly cause weather modification over us to have a negative effect. Let's say a hurricane, large hail, drought. Now, these are not my suppositions. These are the suppositions of, let's say, Defense Secretary William Cohen, Bill Bill Clinton's Secretary of Defense, saying that our enemies could do eco-terrorism. This is him. And they also saying they could set off volcanoes and earthquakes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. But he talks about altering the climate. Now, if the Russians have the capability to alter the climate, or the Chinese have the capability to alter the climate, do you think they're going to be doing it to help us? Do you? That is the question that you've got to ask. Now, on this second page, of course, we're still, we still show all kinds of companies that do this. But you're going to see that the science behind interfering with the weather is solid, whether it be particulate matter or whether it be radio frequency. Now, producer, as you scroll down, you're going to see, you just, you just keep on scrolling down, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, and you'll just see program after program after program from the U.S. Army, from the U.S. Navy, from aquifer authorities, from private companies, American Society for Civil uh, Engineering, hail suppression, Colorado, laws to govern weather modification, precipitation enhancement, examples from the 1940s and 1950s where particulate matter is sprayed. And it really becomes obvious that that the world has been lied to about weather modification. That it's been, first of all, it's been taking place for a very long time. And secondly, the programs that have been in operation are very expansive and expensive. They cover entire continents. We're paying for it. Now, producer, as you scroll down, we're going to get all the way down and you're going to see a thing called... um, outlawing the use of VLF to HF weapons. And we are about halfway down the page, and it's a congressional bill, H.R. 2977. And this was introduced by Dennis Kucinich. (laughs) Now, of course, I'm not taking sides politically, but I'm going to read this to you. And this has to do with space-based weapons and outlawing the use of Space-based weapons. Hmm? Space-based weapons? What are you talking about? I thought that there was no such thing as Star Wars. Well, apparently, talk in Congress says otherwise. Now, they're, they're talking about the Space Preservation Act. This is 2001, the Space Preservation Act. And I'm just going to read to you a few lines out of it. I'm not going to read the whole bill to you. But uh, they want to outlaw... Uh, expelling chemical or biological agents in the vicinity of a person, outlawing exotic weapon systems such as electronic, psychotronic, or information weapons, outlawing chemtrails, and that's in the bill, guys, chemtrails, all one word, outlawing high-altitude, ultra-low-frequency weapon systems. Isn't that implying that there are ultra-low-frequency weapon systems in the first place? Outlaw plasma, electromagnetic, sonic, or ultrasonic weapons. Outlaw laser weapon systems. Hmm? Wait, wait, hold on. Outlaw laser weapon systems? Didn't we just show you for the last seven days all the footage of the U.S. Navy outfitting their new ships and their trucks, uh, the U.S. Army outfitting uh, trucks with laser weapon systems? Now, this falls under space-based weapons, but they're talking about generally laser weapon systems to be outlawed. Now, obviously, this failed. This is a big deal. But this is here in the States. This is just us. And, of course, it failed here. If it fails here, well, you can you imagine what's going on internationally? Now, below that bill, we're going to start looking at some pictures. Now, I'm going to describe the pictures to you, and I'll put this in a video so you guys can understand um, and what, what we're talking about here, maybe you can watch it on YouTube at some point. Um, we've got a break in five minutes already, but I should be able to get into the first couple facilities here. 
Now, the first picture is look, something that looks just like harp that we were talking about last week. A series of tall antennas spaced out into a grid. Now, the picture itself is somewhat older, and the reason it's older is because lack of information, lack of knowledge has, uh, well, allowed for the scientific community to not be responsible in giving us the information that we deserve. So you're going to start seeing old pictures and old information on facilities that are still in operation, and there could be great HD pictures out there, but they're not releasing them. Why? Because they're trying to hide from you that not only is there a harp, but the first picture is the Sura ionospheric heating facility. And I'm going to read this to you. They've got a wiki and they've got some other pages. And I'll just read the general description you'll find from pretty much um, any, any source. The Sura, and that's spelled S-U-R-A, ionospheric heating facility located near the small town of Velosurisk, about 100 kilometers eastward from Nizhny Novgorod, Russia, is a laboratory for ionospheric research. Sura is capable of radiating 190 megawatts effective radiated power, ERP, on short waves. This facility is operated by the Radio Physical Research Institute, the NERFI, in Nizhny Novgorod. It was commissioned in 1981. Using this facility, Russian researchers studied the behavior of the ionosphere and the effect of generation of low-frequency emissions on modulations of ionospheric currents. Okay, now, what does this say? This says that the Russians had their own version of HARP in 1981. Now, wait, doesn't that mean the Russians are ahead of us? Doesn't that mean that the Russians knew and know more than we do on the topic of radio frequency manipulation of the weather? Yes, it does, because they had the woodpecker before we started. First hand know that. I heard it for myself. Yes, Tat is talking about a signal that is heard by shortwave radio operators around the world, and they still hear it too today every once in a while. And it's a signal that comes out of the old Soviet Union, now Russia, right next to Chernobyl. Chernobyl, the uh, nuclear reactor that melted down, guys. They built a massive radar facility right next to it and pulse and hit Chernobyl every day, or almost every day. Now, why do they do that? Why pulse it and hit it with radar? Well, this is a question that we're going to have to get into after the break, because this touches on what we were talking about last week with HARP and stripping of electrons from the atmosphere. This is some profound science we're going to get into here about radiation, and I'm talking about nuclear radiation, and radio frequency and the effect of radio frequency on radiolog radiological substances, substances that are radioactive. And this is profound science that I think most of you would be very interested to find out even exists or is possible. But this Sura effect. facility, we're going to go to break here in a second, guys. Let me give out the number. We're going to take callers at the start of hour number two. So we've got another 30 minutes before we'll even be able to take calls because it's going to take me 30 minutes to get through these facilities. Uh, the number is 314, or I'm sorry, 567 314 9296. And again, that's 567 314 9296. And uh, Chrissy, I haven't even given you a chance to talk. I am sorry. I've been one flowing stream of consciousness again this week. It's crazy. It is okay. It's okay. I'm listening. I'm learning. <laughs> good, good. I hope everybody's enjoying it. And you know, you can follow along with this post yourself. Feel free to click on the link that's been posted in the chat room or down below this video and verify everything I'm telling you. You don't have to take my word for it. I, as a matter of fact, please don't go look it up. I encourage you to. Ah, perfect timing. <laughs> See you after the break.
doTERRA essential oils true gifts of the earth provide you with the perfect prepper tool the family physician kit 10 certified pure therapeutic grade oils to provide the support you need for your family's wellness goals when sheltering in place or bugging out visit essentialnewparadigm.info and ask how you can receive $100 in free product and 25% off each and every order don't delay your family's health depends on you health depends on you Thanks for listening to FPRN. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to start your own show with FPRN, advertise with us or donate to the network or to your favorite shows, check out our website at www.fprnradio.com. Welcome back. Freedom Frequency 1871. This is your host, Dutch Sense. I've also got Tattooed here with me and Chrissy Sumer, our guest host, still on the line and being quiet, you guys. I appreciate it because I need to talk. I need to say this to the world uh, that this information needs to go to the top. It never does. Never does. But I'm very passionate about what I'm talking about here, guys. Weather modification, directed energy weapons, next generation technologies that are being rolled out now are going to change your life forever, my life too. And if we don't talk about it and we don't acknowledge that it's happening, then it'll never be corrected. It's like denying that there's nuclear weapons or something. I mean, this is something that we all need to be concerned about. And that I'm trying to do my best to explain it to you guys why the United States is doing it and in response to the other countries that are doing it. See, I feel like the United States has kind of caught a lot of the blame for weather modification, directed energy weapons, and that's just because the U.S. is the big boy in town. Unfortunately, the U.S. has been lagging behind severely for a very long time with next generation technologies. This goes back to the late 1800s and Tesla, maybe even further back. But when Tesla was mocked by the scientific community and literally was rejected almost, most people don't know Tesla sold several of his inventions to the Russians. They believed him. They uh, at least paid for some of his inventions, some of his patents. And they developed them beginning in the late 1800s, going into the early 1900s, he is, um, his technology is being exploited by other countries. Now, he, I think, was wise to that. And eventually, the United States started to develop their own versions of his previous patents. So Tesla coils and uh, different types of uh, radio frequency apertures. And by the 1930s, The United States is doing experiments. I'll give you an example. You guys can look this up. This is really interesting. Uh, In New York, from the Empire State Building, a series of experiments were done called Z-Ray experiments. At least that's what the media called it at the time. Z as in Z, zebra, Z-Ray. And airplanes that were flying by would temporarily lose their power. And they were warned to steer clear of the area while these experiments were taking place. You can go look up the old newspaper clippings on it. Really interesting story. But what it proves is that in the 30s, from the tallest building in town, they are doing radio frequency experiments. Now, 30 years earlier, I would suppose the same thing was happening over in Russia. However, there wasn't air traffic to worry about flying over that could lose power. However, these Tesla experiments, going back again to the 1800s, involve radio frequency Stripping of electrons, electron cascade, lightning, and even some more wild aspects of, I mean, this is Tesla's words, time travel, mind control. Now, our enemies, again, according to our Secretary of Defense, William Cohen, Bill Clinton's Secretary of Defense, said that our enemies have the capability to set off volcanoes remotely using electromagnetic frequency. Well... We just looked at the Sura Ionospheric Heating Facility, which is capable of generating earthquakes, I'm sure, 
And again, we've proved this already. So this is not conjecture on my part, other than to say that we don't have, um, you know, nobody sitting there with a, a frequency counter at Sura, but we know that the technology can cause weather phenomenon, earthquakes, volcanoes erupting. But they have been trumped over the last several years due to new players in the field. And this goes down to the next post here, which is the ISCAT Associates. And I'll spell it for you. The E-I-S-C-A-T Associates. This is European. And what they're doing, they've built a series of dishes and antennas that are supposedly, again, for space communications, ionospheric study. However, it's their version of HARP. It really is. And you guys can go look up the um, technical specs on it. But it has it, HARP operating more in the single megahertz spectrum. They're going up into the 500 megahertz range. So we're talking about different frequency spectrum covered here over by ISCAT. However, the effects are the same. They can generate aurora. They can control plasma. They can shoot down a missile. They could cause an earthquake. Again, the science is already proved behind this. Now, the ISCAT Associates has a sub-facility. It's in Norway. It's called SPEAR, S-P-E-A-R. And I'm going to read you the first paragraph. This is from their website as a description. SPEAR is a revolutionary new high-powered radar system which is designed to carry out research into the Earth's upper atmosphere and magnetosphere. Again, atmosphere, guys. In the vicinity of the polar cap, this research will help us answer some key questions about our aerospace environment, particularly the interaction of the solar wind and the upper atmosphere. Now, you can go on and read the, the rest of this article, which I will post on my website so you guys can see what I'm looking at here. But the facility is designed to cause and interact with plasma over the North Pole. It's a North Pole heater, their own words. So if it's heating the North Pole using radar, and that's over in Norway, and of course they're saying they're doing experiments, of course, ionospheric experiments, upper atmosphere experiments, and people who are not technical may not understand the difference between atmosphere and ionosphere. But if you're doing something in the atmosphere, we're actually talking about the capability of generating weather effects, atmosphere. And once you go higher, you start going into level, different levels of space where we're not talking about gas, gaseous interaction with oxygen or nitrogen in the air, but we're talking about um, you know, in a vacuum environment the higher you go. So they can hit anywhere, and when I say hit, I mean they can target a frequency anywhere from ground level or below ground all the way up into the far reaches of space. Now, there's another facility, and I'm, we're going to scroll down one more below the ISCAT Associates, the Europeans facility, and you're going to see a facility in Peru. And I can never pronounce this right, but I think it's Jaicamarca, Peru. And there is another square, multiple-acre, large antenna array. And, again, it's a radar, heater, ionospheric study facility. Now, these ionospheric study facilities we've proved over and over again with HARP and with the Russians and now with ISCAT, that they overlap. Their, their, their capabilities are the same. Radio frequency is radio frequency whether it comes out of your microwave and heats up your coffee or whether it's coming out of a giant square array and it's heating up the atmosphere targeted to the north, south, east, or west. Now, you're probably wondering, how do they target? How are they capable of targeting a antenna that doesn't move? They can literally modulate the antenna using power itself. By applying different levels of power, they can turn, quote-unquote, the signal, north, south, east, or west, up or down. And down, again, means down into the earth, which, again, they have proved over and over again, can cause earthquakes. Now, this Jai Kamarka also has a radar facility there, and you'll find out that radar 
and ionospheric atmospheric heating go hand in hand and they overlap and interchange. You can use a radar to do the same thing that Jaikamarka radio antenna array can do only on a smaller level over a smaller area targeted to a much smaller point. Now, why do we have that capability, let's say? Well, I would say we have the capability to target our radars and cause pulses that would show up uh, and have a weather effect is to defend ourselves possibly from the other countries that have the capability to terrorize us. And when I say terrorize, that's not my words. Those are the words, again, of William Cohen, defense secretary. And this is a big deal because if our enemies beat us to the punch and have the capability to cause an earthquake, let's say, we need to have the capability to defend ourselves and possibly retaliate, right? I don't think anybody would disagree with a defensive capability for any of these technologies that we're talking about. Unfortunately, what we've come to find out is that there are no laws governing these things, first of all. This goes far beyond anything. This is, this is something that is going to have to be addressed at some point in the near-term future um, for these facilities, which is they're interacting with places that are very far away from their home country. So these, there was a UN law that prohibits weather modification and even space-based weapons um, from the 1970s, and countries were only allowed to operate weather modification-wise, let's say, over their own country, and they can't have an effect on the overall climate. They can only affect local climates, and that was the rule. Well, if Sura can heat an area, or Hart can heat an area, or ISCAT can heat an area over the North Pole, that's not their territory. That is international territory, which means there needs to be international laws that govern these things like we govern nuclear weapons. It's just as devastating as a nuclear weapon. To generate a plasma field multiple kilometers wide in the atmosphere at 5,000 degrees for over an hour, isn't that the equivalent of a, at least a small nuclear weapon? Maybe not radiation-wise, but for sure heating-wise. The surface of the sun for over an hour? I mean, that's longer than a nuclear blast, actually. Now, speaking of the surface of the sun, we can scroll down one more picture below this Jaikamarka, and you'll see the Arecibo. Arecibo. Yeah, we've all seen it in all the movies. There it is, the big dish in, in the ground. Arecibo. Well, what's Arecibo doing on here? Arecibo has been co-opted in as part of an ancillary facility, if you will, for the HARP program. It's taken part in experiments with HARP. You can look this up. You don't have to take my word for it. It's in the Wayback Machine. And you can see that they're um, doing different ionospheric research. They're using Arecibo to, let's say, look at a plasma event generated by HARP. So using Arecibo like a radar to look at a, a plasma density and, and see it, quote unquote, even though it's not visible to the naked eye. In process of study on Arecibo and HARP, I stumbled across something they're using Arecibo for that'll blow your mind. They're using Arecibo to bounce radar off the sun. What? Yes. And they found out that as they pump a radar signal, a broadcast out into space, that there's an inflation process that occurs power-wise in the signal. And we're talking about theta hertz here. THZ, theta hertz. And they're, using, they're getting a theta hertz pulse off the sun that they're imaging. That they're, that's the power involved here. I couldn't even get my head around it at first. I was like, what are they using this for? Why do they need to radar the sun? And then this ties in with the observations from other people, other solar researchers on, let's say, YouTube or something, that have noticed that um, solar flares are happening less and less facing Earth, that they either fire off before, as they come around the eastern limb of the sun or as they go around to the west. So this is something that should be looked into, by the way that could it be possible that facilities are being used to somehow manipulate the sun? It's a question that's been posed to me multiple times. 
by multiple people. So it's not like it's some realm of conspiracy. It's a good question. Can you manipulate the sun with radio frequency? Now, this goes into the other U.S. facilities that tie in with HARP. And again, these were all built at the same time. So when you're like looking at, um, you know, within 15, 20 years of each other, all of these places have been built. So there's been an arms race, I, almost like an arms race. Like you can imagine with nuclear weapons, you know, my nuke is bigger than yours. And they, they're going back and forth. Now, the Europeans um, trumped us supposedly with ISCAT. But, you know, now they've upgraded HARP, of course, to be the most powerful, powerful facility in the world. Now, the Chinese, and again, now, I don't have anything on the Chinese here because there's really not much that they're providing. Um, you're going to have to look this up yourself, copying it even. Couldn't copy the pictures, guys. And you, I, mean, I mean, I take screenshots, and the screenshot comes up with a uh, grid across it. I mean, really hard to copy from these Chinese sites. Um, the Chinese project called the Meridian. And you won't find this on my page here. I'm going to have to do a separate post on the Chinese Meridian. But to sum up the Chinese project, it is 10 times bigger, I would say, than the U.S. current project with HARP. And it covers the entire continent of China, of Asia, but specifically across China, from the North Pole all the way down to their southernmost point. And they've built a series of radar stations, rheometers, um, just everything that you would need to do radio frequency warfare. Now, they do it under the disguise of ionospheric research. If anybody tells you that they're just using this for study, they are naive, I think. You know, they're just being intentionally, willfully ignorant, or they're lying. Um, they, there's no other explanation for that. I, I cannot overlook the weaponized capabilities that have been talked about by the multiple militaries around the world when they're saying they're going to use it for destroying a missile. And then we have a scientist come along and say, no, 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 these facilities are only capable of generating small little phenomenon in the ionosphere. No, we're talking about generating multiple kilometer wide plasma bubbles at 5,000 degrees that are capable of melting missiles, which we've proved this past week showed multiple shots of the U.S. military using high-powered lasers to knock out airplanes, knock down incoming mortars, and that's just with a targeted light. When you target a radio frequency, they have proved now over and over again that they are capable of generating plasma. And plasma, again, guys, is direct visible energy that they're generating. It's not. This is not invisible. When they actually are generating a plasma ball, there's pictures of it. They have actual pictures of something multiple kilometers wide that's 5,000 degrees floating there in the sky that they can move around. That is, to me, is the ultimate force field. It is the ultimate missile defense shield. It is the ultimate weapon. It is the death ray. The death ray. Going back to Tesla, guys. And it's not science fiction. It's science fact. It's, it, they've already did it. They did the experiment at the start of 2013 with the plasma ball using radio frequency. Imagine if they did that at a ground level over a city multiple kilometers wide. What would happen? What if one of our enemies did it? The Russians, right after Japan, the Japan earthquake in 2011 that killed 15,000 people and generated a uh, massive tsunami... A Russian parliament member got up and took credit for it, shrugged his shoulders and said, we have a new weapon that's capable of sinking entire continents. It was on national TV in Russia to a news reporter, and she's smiling, and she just went on to the next question like it didn't even get said. And this guy is high up in their Congress. It'd be like one of our high congressmen saying, you know, we've got this weapon that can capable of, capable of sinking continents. And then shrugging his shoulders and saying, you know, the Japan earthquake, could that have been, you know, could have been us? Mm -hmm. I mean, he says this. And I, I don't think they're bluffing. When I see the U.S. building huge facilities, going through massive misinformation campaigns to distract the public and lie to us about what we are doing. You know, this goes back to the story that Harp was closed. I think the producer actually has a link um, it's the ARRL Amateur Radio League uh, post. 
And this is what got the ball rolling for Tattoot and I in a huge online battle with every disinformation nerd out there about what's going on and what's capable. And this story appeared on so this, this amateur radio league site saying that Harp is abandoned. Currently, the site is abandoned. It comes down to money. We don't have any. They, first, they say there's no money. Then they say diesel generators. It's ridiculous, this story. And it got promoted across. Infowars picked it up. All the mainstream picked it up. YouTubers made videos on it. Oh, did you hear Harp's closed? Did you hear? I said, are you kidding me? It's been budgeted out till 2017. Literally paid for till 2017. They didn't run out of money. What are you talking about? We've got uh, the budgets posted. Now, why would they do that? Why would they try to convince us that Harp is shut down? Well, it has to do with what's going on behind the scenes, guys. There is, I would say, a borderline war that is occurring between us, Russia, China, our allies, of course, Canada, UK, Australia, the other two kind of on their own. But there is a weather war going on currently, if you ask my personal opinion. Can I prove it? Well, I'm looking around and I'm seeing a lot of strange stuff happening weather-wise. Some of it can't be us doing it to ourselves. It's not natural. You try and tell me it's natural? Really? Not you guys, but whoever's out there trying to tell me. You know, Don't tell me it's natural because I don't believe you. You're going to have to prove to me that that's natural at this point. Um, we're coming down to break. In snow, minutes, guys. snow twisters? Thunder and lightning when it's snowing? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. The snow twister. Yeah, the snow tornadoes, guys. Snow tornadoes. Two of them last year, remember? One coming off the mountains. It was a tornado, too. It wasn't like some kind of dust devil. or I mean, it really was a tornado in the snow. And this isn't, uh, you know, uh, four feet of hail in North Texas last year. Remember that, Tat? Four feet. Weather modification, radio frequency manipulation of the weather, is something that in the 1980s was a huge concern for what the Russians could do to us. There is a video you can go watch by Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden. It's called Soviet Weather Engineering over the United States. And there's Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden telling you, me, the people, everything that I just told you over the last two weeks. Only at the time, people shrugged their shoulders and said they didn't think it was possible. Now the experiment's been done. The papers are out there. Last week's show, two hours straight, me showing nothing but backed up, peer-reviewed scientific confirmations on everything. What kind of response did it get? Well, I was expecting the alternative news media and the people on YouTube and all the people who said that Harp was closed to correct themselves, I guess. I guess that was hoping too much. There was no corrections issued. We showed that it's open and paid for. The only thing turned off is the website. Yet, the disinformation still abounds. And our videos went to the wayside a few thousand views. However, I would encourage you guys to not be discouraged by the lack of input from the community that's obviously showing across multiple spectrums. It's not just the information we're presenting. But to take action. What kind of action can you take? Well, you can start sharing the information. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go, you know, nobody's asking you to go march anywhere or donate anything. Just share the information. Next time you hear somebody tell you that Harp is closed, you tell them, no, it's not. And you've been lied to and you're trying to lie to me or you don't know. And then tell them why we need our own capabilities because our enemies have the capabilities. I'm not saying don't build Harp. I'm not saying don't have it ready and waiting. But I am saying, don't use it on us. I'm telling the Russians, don't use your harp on us, guys, please. <laughs> is that being a little bit too altruistic? I think it is. But, uh, you know, you don't know unless you ask, I guess. But in all reality, I, I, I really worry that the lies that have been presented over the course of the last several months cannot be undone. No matter how many times I try and show you guys. 
I don't know. We're going to come up to break here in a few seconds. When we get back, you guys can call in uh, 567-314-9296. Tat, you guys got anything you want to add? I do. They could Skype in, too, at FPRN Radio Live. If- Perfect. Word up, guys. We'll be right back. doTERRA essential oils true gifts of the earth provide you with the perfect prepper tool the family physician kit 10 certified pure therapeutic grade oils to provide the support you need for your family's wellness goals when sheltering in place or bugging out visit essentialnewparadigm.info and ask how you can receive hundred dollars in free product and 25 percent off each and every order don't delay your family's health depends on you health depends on you thanks for listening to fprn Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to start your own show with FBRN, advertise with us or donate to the network or to your favorite shows, check out our website at www.fprnradio.com. Who can believe the Warren Report With all that's happened since then Blue-blooded people on the highest court that's what I've heard again Welcome back and again. to Freedom Frequency 1871. This is your host, Dutch Sense. I have Tattooed and Chrissy here on the phone with me. I hope you guys are still here. Yes. Excellent. Guys, we've been going into the radio frequency spectrum for the last two weeks now. First starting on HARP. Going through Air Force Owning the Weather 2025, directed energy weapons like high-powered microwaves and lasers. Then, now, we've for the last hour, I've kind of blathered on a little bit about our enemies and why we need the capabilities um, that we've got. But the Russians, being a good 20 years ahead of us at least, in just the beginning foundational aspects, and then, of course, carrying on. Um, into an era in the 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, where we were in complete denial, and meanwhile, they are in full development. You know, they beat us in the space race, guys. Come on. You know, we this played that true. down. Yeah, yeah we, we played it down a little bit and, and you know, said that, you know, we, we were going to get to the moon, right? <laughs> Did we? Yeah, yeah. I don't mm-hmm. think so. <laughs> PR wise, we did, I guess, take you fly right to the moon. But yeah, television, um, television took us to the moon. Right, TV, baby. That's what they learned how to brainwash people. Yeah, they did. The, you know, guys, if you believe the space program the way it was, I, I don't even know what to say to you. I, I, I'm not going to say that we didn't land on the moon, but I'm going to tell you there's some definite, definite misinformation going on there. From our end. If they reason. landed on the moon, they got technology way beyond what Russia does and way beyond anybody else to this day. I mean, right. that's all there is to it. They got some kind of force field that co- surrounded that ship to protect them to go to the moon with human life on it. That's just all there is to it. I'm not well, saying they- that they didn't go. I'm saying if they did go... They got technology that they're still not telling us. And I mean, they're not telling us at all. Not nothing. They're not whimpering a word about it. Because you just can't go into space with just aluminum shelled body or metal of some sort, some kind of alloy. It's got to be something else that they took them past that that area where they can't go. There's just no way. Unless they have technology that we don't know about. And I mean, we're talking about the 60s. We didn't have technology like we got. We didn't have computers. We didn't have cell phones like we got today. We were still dialing on the telephone. Dialing. Y'all rem- Does anybody remember how to dial on the telephone? I mean, that's what you're talking about. That, that that's a there's a lot of technology there between all of that. I mean Nin- something. 
I mean, it's a. I mean, <laughs> it, it's just my opinion, though. Don't don't take it for gospel, but I mean, that's there's seriously something to that. I mean, there's just certain things you just can't go beyond unless you got the technology. Now, if we had the technology, I'd be the first one to say it. But how come we can take beautiful pictures of other planets, but the moon's the closest thing to us, and we can't <laughs> see those beautiful pictures of the moon, the moon like we do other planets? Why is that? Can anybody answer that question? I mean, we can get pretty pictures from Earth with our little small telescopes, but they got telescopes in space that could take <clears throat> close-up pictures of that thing all the way around the moon. They could actually send a light on the dark side of the moon and light it up so they could take pictures of that too. But why don't they? Why I haven't think- they? I think they have. They just don't release them to us. They give us the low resolution. They're hiding something. Who knows? It's a conspiracy. There you go. (laughs) Got to be a big one. (laughs) I wonder myself, you know, why not? Why why don't we have a satellite around the moon? An awesome lunar orbiter that gives us just top-notch pictures in the dark, infrared, whatever. Why not? Why is it not there? But we got one on Mars, or we're supposed to have. Is that real? Or is that fake, too? I mean, you know? Hmm. I mean, they did come out and say they found the Ten Commandments on the moon on Mars in a cave. Oh, God. They really? Yeah, they did say that. NASA, that's a report from NASA said that. But, hey, is it true? I NASA, don't know. never a straight answer. <laughs> it never, You never get a straight answer about nothing. We got two callers, it looks like. Oh, okay. We got some. We got four callers on. We've got Greg, God be one, unknown, and Ali. Uh, um, yeah, okay. Well, you know what? Real quick, guys. Um, this week, you know, we're really just talking about hypotheticals. We're talking about our enemies, quote unquote, who aren't really our enemies, right? They're our friends. We're all friends behind the scene. It's just a matter of one defense against the other to promote each other's economies. This next generation technology, though, what we showed to you this past week, this is no joke. Projectile weapons, planes, tanks, bullets. That's so 20th century, guys. Time to get in the 21st. Go look up everything we showed you over the last two weeks. You can verify anything that I told you about the U.S. programs. You can also verify any of these other facilities. Next week, we're going solely into radar. Harp rings. Dun-da-da. Here we come. (laughs) You ready? Harp ring time, guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bring it on. Mick West. Maybe I can get a hold of Steve Quest. (laughs) All right. Let's go to um, first caller on the phone, Greg. Greg, is this Greg, Greg, Greg? Yeah, yeah I think so. Uh, are, you, are you guys there? Hey, Greg. hey, you sound great, brother. How you doing? Hey, we finally connected without a snafu. Good. Good, you, you sound wonderful. Me, How you, you got doing? Me on video? Do what now? Do you have me on video, Skype? No. I wanna, no? Can you bring it up? Um. Yes, we can. Okay, do that. And then, uh, and Dutch, thank you for covering that Arecibo thing that we were talking about last Friday after the show. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I told you that. I'd cover it. And, and Arecibo, exactly, guys. I, that, you know, that was bothering me so much. I go, man, there ain't no way that this is going on without some sort of influence. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if. Every now and then I'll get to watch one of these Vandenberg launches go over my house. Well, not over my house, but I can watch them from my Binox when they launch a satellite or that uh, X-47B. And you can watch it go off, and it's kind of neat. And I was thinking, wow, what if they're sending up, like, I mean, I'm crazy, but maybe it's like sending 
a couple of nukes over to the to the sun and you know fire them off over there and then see what happens you know right, that's right. kind we of can crazy see you stuff. now <laughs> we can see you now greg okay hey uh can you see this document Does it say weather modification on it? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, weather modification hearing. Um, wh yeah, what are we yeah, looking I at here? It. I can't read it because I've got it faced this way. 95th Congress, 1977. Okay, that's neat. The Committee on Science and Technology, U.S. House of Representatives on weather modification. Really? What year yeah. is this? 1977, man. Now, where did you find that? Now, um, guys, what we're talking oh, about here. Oh, I can show you. You want to see this? Me and an and a ex-LAPD, uh, well, retired LAPD, P -E, uh, LAPD officer, he got hurt in an uh, armed robbery accident and damaged his shoulder, so he had to retire. Do you see this book? Disciples of the Serpent. Yeah, we made that up. See the Soviet star, the UN crest, with the mm -hmm. uh, serpent around the globe. And the serpent starts in the Mideast and uh, comes around to the United States with the final kiss. Can you kind of yes, see and that? Now let me describe it to the viewers here who are listening, guys. He's hold, he has a book called Disciples of the Serpent, and it's it looks like it's in red and gold writing. It's got a snake around the globe, a, a red globe with a snake around it, like an Ouroboros, where the snake is eating its own tail. But the, yeah, it's, but it's see, curving in to crash, eat the no. U.S. And it's got a rising star over its back. Five Soviet point star. star. <laughs> Interesting. The Lucifer. Yeah, we made this up in 1994. I had like three cabinet, three giant file cabinets full of documents. And we just pulled out the most salient features. And uh, we just put together a book that would be like a thumbnail sketch of how it would be in this coming, so to speak. <laughs> it's kind of funny to me. Uh, it's not funny to what's going to happen. Here's another document. Uh See if I can get this lined up. This is from the, it's basically from the United Nations, but we're talking about, uh, pardon me, it's uh, create a world. Can you see that? Um, it's it's really hard to read. Um, do you want to yeah. read us something off it? Is What's this from? It's the United Nations? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a United Nations from the United Nations. It says, create a world full bank, uh, food bank, provide for international control of all sources and supplies, internationalize commodity markets, establish international control over the wealth of the oceans and the deep seabeds, provide for international control of the weather oh, and brother. human command. <laughs> wow, this is a UN document, folks. Uh, what he's reading to you here is it is it looks like it's an actual official UN file document, correct? Yeah. Wow, and it's talking about new world order. It's talking about creating world currency, weather control, um, yeah. rewrite and it's put the forth rules by a former of trade ambassador. And investment, create world currency, create a world police to keep the peace. When it is threatened and restore the peace when it is broken, provide special programs to teach the benefits of the new world order, to teach of six categories of American institutions, namely business corporations, labor unions, nonprofit enterprises, communications, media, education systems, and government agencies, and goes blah, 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 on and on. Wow. <laughs> you know you know what you're showing there, Greg, looks like a blueprint for the, for the New World Order. Um, guys, if you, if, you don't, if you don't believe in the New World Order, um, I, I, would, I would urge you all to go look back to September 11th of 1991, and there you will see 10 years to the day 
before the 9-11 attacks, again, on September 11, 1991, George Bush gave the famous New World Order speech on TV. I saw about three of those at least, yeah. Yeah, and he gave, he said, we shall forge for ourselves and future generations a new world order. It's in our book. It, it's, it's, it's undeniable. So if you don't believe in the new world order and you don't believe that there's a plan to create this global dominion, um, then you need to read up because it's being talked about. It's being done. This weather control plays in with world control. And the countries that are taking part have already agreed behind the scenes, just like in the book 1984. Okay, you've got three major superpowers behind the scenes. Same thing with what's going on today. All three working behind the scenes to forge for themselves and future generations one giant global cluster. Thousand points of light. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We got, we got four more callers in there, guys. Oh, hey, let, me, let me get off for a second, but you know all those documents you can find if you go in the L.A. Times uh, archives, you could find all the State of the Union addresses by George Herbert Walker Bush regarding the New World Order. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of New World Order, Chrissy, did you ever find out what the name of that uh, or what the performers were for your uh, bumper music theme song is? Welcome to the new world order. I didn't get to look into it. I, I, I know it's on the tip of my tongue. Maybe the producer could tell me. I tried to find it. I can't find it. <laughs> okay, let me get off. Uh, thank it's you guys that, very much beats, for your time. It's Deadbeats um, Inc. I Dead love Beats. you guys. I'll, pardon me? It's Dead Beats Inc. Dead Bink Inc. Okay. All right. Hey, and Greg, do me a favor. If you can, if you got a printer... Scan those documents and send them to me. No kidding, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, how about can I fax? I've I got a printer, but it's faxing. down. I got to fix it, sucker. Okay. Uh, well, maybe we'll come up with a fax. Well, I'll see. It okay. won't be no time soon, though, but I'll see what I can do about that. Okay. <clears throat> All Excellent. right, buddy. Awesome, Greg. Hey, we'll man, talk to you, man. Me. I'll talk to you this week for sure, brother. Thank you for calling hey, in. Can you call me tomorrow? And then I'll yeah, I'll for sure. Yeah, back. I'll give you a holler tomorrow. Fifteen minutes brother. on your phone, I'll pay for it. So oh, head. not a problem, <laughs> dude. No, 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 don't worry about it, brother. I'll give you a holler. Um, again, thank you, thank you for calling. And guys, the New World Order. What he's showing there. What Greg has done. He's a concerned viewer who wants to get involved. He's he's somebody who wants to do the research and tell the world what he's finding. And I would hope that he is inspiration for any of you who are waking up or trying to find something to do or see if you can help change things. Sometimes even just finding a document like that, something from the UN that says uh, a new world order should be forged. That is something that is amazing. You know, we got, okay, now we got another caller on the line. I think next caller is God be one. God be one. You are on the line and you're go. How you doing? Hey, how's it going? Well, y'all's phone system is terrible. We couldn't hear a word Greg said. Oh, no. You couldn't hear anything? But, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, brother, man. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, the New World Order thing, the Agenda 21, I mean, that, that, that horse is been beat to death that was all we already signed up for that stuff like you said in 91 12 years after the you know alien chit chat hmm. <clears throat> yeah <laughs> Project you know, glass. that's why we can't go to the we were told we, we could not return to the moon from you know the other entities yeah right and like well, uh, <laughs> made it to the moon with the uh, anti-gravity. We've had the anti-gravity since Tesla. They all came up with all the anti-gravity stuff. They've, they, they, they use that. Rockets won't get you nowhere. You know, guys, most people might not know this, um, that in the 1960s, when supposedly they flew the capsules uh, to the moon, that the appropriate radiation, solar radiation shielding 
did not exist, according to multiple researchers. Now, I'm not a radiation shielding expert. However, I would say that that does make sense to me, that the, once you go beyond the Van Allen belts, um, that you are going to get fried out in space unless you have the appropriate shielding from the sun. And that they didn't invent that until, well, in roughly the 80s, supposedly. Which means, how did they go? How did they not die? Here, one second, guys. How did they not die? Well, when they do the anti, it invokes a uh, plasma field around the vessel, and it's protected by all, all the radiation when the plasma field is invoked around it. Okay, well, like well how, how, do, how do we explain them walking on the earth uh, on the moon? I mean, they had to have a, a mighty strong drill. force field. No, uh, really, you don't have the solar radiation in the in space like you think. I mean, you you can't even see the sun in space. It's kind of weird, but it's just the way it is. That's right. Uh, you know, guys. Um, this is something that's an intriguing topic for me, which is, you know, past technology in the 1950s and 1960s either was much greater than we are being told today, or they were incredibly lucky over and over and over again. And I just don't believe in that kind of luck. I don't believe that they would just maybe have a day where there wasn't very much solar radiation going on um, in that three-day, four-day time period. That's just not going to happen. So the technology that existed then, well, we figured out for certain that they had high-powered lasers in the 1960s capable of generating weather precipitation over Vietnam. Well, if they had high-powered lasers in the 60s, what does that mean now? It means the high-powered lasers that we have are old, probably overstock from the 60s that they're outfitting on planes and trains and boats that means they got something that's 10 times stronger than a laser. Right, something that can block the laser. If they've got something, you know, if the if our enemies are going to be developing high-powered lasers or high, uh, high-powered microwave weapons, we're most likely going to have the capability to defend ourselves from those things. This is all an area of technology that is coming out that we need to research. People need to look into this. Every, every story you find... In my opinion, you still there, guy? I mean, I was in the Air Force early '90s, and uh, they they way above that. I mean, they're they're 50 years ahead of whatever you think document you can pull up and photo. They're they're 50 years ahead of that. You you don't ever hear about that stuff. Yeah, well, it's probably national I mean, security, up. so they're not going to talk about it. Well, that's what they're saying. Well, I mean, you know. Command is uh, owned by the Air Force. Same thing with the weather, all that. They they run the the world because we got the spacecraft. I mean, they, they don't fly from here to Mars. They they walk to Mars through Project Looking Glass at S four. They they just dial up and walk on to Mars. What is this? Project Looking Project Glass? Looking I've Project Looking Glass. Isn't that the one where, um, what's her name was talking about it? Oh, I can't remember. I've never heard of this one. This is, you know, very rarely do I hear about a, a uh, you know, a conspiracy that I haven't heard of. Looking Glass, huh? What is it, like inter- interdimensional travel or um, subspace travel or something? It's, I guess you can look at it like yeah, it's an elevator. Teleportation? Sort of. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Tesla? It's, hey. a, it's a combo that does teleportation, and it'll do a two-year look into the future. That's how most of these politicians actually win their elections, is um, they're, they're rigged. They got a two-year head start. Well, all these, all these concepts that we're discussing here are theoretically possible. Again, theoretically. Now... We most likely have some of this capability. Tesla, let me give you guys a quick story before we go to the break. Tesla was struck by a bolt of electricity, and this is his own story in his diaries, that he was struck 
one day when doing an experiment, his assistant was there operating the controls. When he was struck for a, he said for, he didn't know how long, but multiple seconds for sure, he came outside of himself and saw his past, his immediate past self right before he got struck. He saw his self as he was being struck and he saw himself falling away after the assistant had turned off the lightning or the electricity. I guess they were generating lightning. That would be the most accurate description. So as he's being struck by a bolt of lightning, he is going outside of space-time for a, a microsecond where he observes himself physically, seeing all three at once, past, present, and future. When the guy shut it off, when the assistant shut it off, he came back into his body. And he didn't die, obviously. But what does that mean? These are things we're going to have to go into. Um, We're going to go to break here, and uh, if you want to hang on the line, uh, we will get back to you right after the break. doTERRA essential oils true gifts of the earth provide you with the perfect prepper tool the family physician kit 10 certified pure therapeutic grade oils to provide the support you need for your family's wellness goals when sheltering in place or bugging out visit essentialnewparadigm.info and ask how you can receive hundred dollars in free product and 25 percent off each and every order don't delay your family's health depends on you health depends on you thanks for listening to fprn Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to start your own show with FPRN, advertise with us or donate to the network or to your favorite shows, check out our website at www.fprnradio.com. Welcome back. Freedom Frequency 1871. This is your host, Dutch Synth. I have Tattooed and Chrissy Sumer on with me. And we've had a great discussion going on so far. Uh, You know, just kind of glossing over all the different enemy capabilities, uh, the people who are involved with radio frequency manipulation of the weather, ionosphere, the planet, directed energy weapons, and now... Um, our caller, God be one, right before the break, was taking us down a road that just really I find is is scientifically intriguing, which is the concepts of interdimensional travel, force fields. Indeed. He also intriguing. said before the break was over that uh, something about Tesla was still alive. Would you? Uh, did you say that, God be, or did I just mishear you? Yeah. Yeah, Tesla's, uh, he reincarnated as Dr. Patrick Flanagan. This has been verified to the United States Air Force that he was Tesla through secret projects only with the Air Force. What? Or, you know, at that time it was the Army. Uh, yeah, you can What's look What's his name? Up, Dr. Patrick Flanagan. I've never heard that either. Tonight's a uh, night of first for me, guys. This is great. These, these are great. Patrick Flanagan? Oh, dude, I'm high up in the tech world. <laughs> I'm going to have to look into that one. I, you know, yeah. you got it. Damn, I wish the radio, the, the phone was connection was better. Yeah, it's taken a minute for it to connect through. But, you know, as for, um, you know, past lives, guys, General Patton, World War II, I mean, this is famous general. Everybody looked up to him. Everybody, you know, there's movies made on him. A great hero in American history. Believe he was reincarnated. Hannibal. A reincarnation of Hannibal, the famous general from 2,000 years ago. Now, do I believe that? I don't know. But I I believe that they believe it. And if there's some backing up to it, if there's some kind of verification that can be done to it, don't automatically discount it. Um, Tesla, you know, guys, Tesla could have easily done his own time travel experiments. He said he he personally had figured out something to do with time travel. That's in his own notes. Take it for what it's worth. It's pretty interesting, though. 
Yeah, definitely very interesting. That's how they verified Don, uh, that Patrick Flanagan was Tesla is through some secret. We call it the David gun. It's what they shot down Comet Ison with. It's a gigantic, you know, pulse weapon that's out in space that can. It's a planet killer. <laughs> the Death Star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get Darth Vader on the phone, will you? Um, no, for <laughs> real. You know, this is, is something they've tried to show us in movies again and again, which is that we do have capability of planetary destruction of some kind. And oh. I would say it, when Tesla is quoted as saying that they could split the planet in half, that's his own quote, that the planet could be split in half using radio frequency. That's not good. No one should have that much power. They can do that by the crystal structure inside the planet. They hit it with harmonics and make the crystals vibrate. They're in all planets. You know, the gigantic crystal structures go all through the planet. They just, they hit them with vibrations and, you know, it doesn't stop. Just like Tesla did his little earthquake with a little bitty box on top of the building, you know, caused an earthquake downtown New York. That's right. And uh, a lot of people may not know this either, is that Tesla, one day they were doing a specific experiment, and they don't give the details on it much, other than it was a radio frequency experiment. When they powered on the device, an earthquake actually began in the vicinity. And we're talking several blocks in New York started to shake. And enough so that they realized immediately that they were causing it. They shut it down, and Tesla had all his assistants lie to the authorities who did come to his laboratory to see if he had something to do with it <laughs> which is kind of funny yeah. and they did, oh and they dismantled the machine really quick too right isn't that didn't they also like take it apart <laughs> whatever they were using they took it apart and lied to the cops when they came and you know this is something that most skeptics deny even can be done but yet here they are doing it in the late 1800s early 1900s it's pretty wild Makes you think. I mean, if you have any questions about Tesla, you can ask Patrick Flanagan. He he will tell you all about his Tesla coils because most people don't even use his Tesla coils properly, anyways. It's kind of funny. Oh yeah, yeah. Though you know, most people just fr they they frivolously build them. First of all, they don't even put them to any kind of good use. Um, you know, what's good? What good is having a Tesla coil if you're just going to sit there and play with it? Um, you know. They, they make music with Tesla coils. That's another thing they can do. You know, Tesla coils are very, very interesting. It's, you know, generation of direct current. Very interesting. The fact that he figured it out on his own, supposedly, well, he, makes, he you, makes you really wonder how he figured it out. The, the, the white lightning, as they call it, the cold lightning. His pictures are deceiving because you don't realize that a lot of them with all the lightning bolts around it really had an exposure rate of about five to eight minutes. All those lightning bolts, you couldn't even see them until you exposed the film for five to eight minutes. And then they showed up because they're really kind of invisible. Are you talking about the, uh, the lightning generated, the static discharge generated from the DC? The, 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 you know, that this is something also that um, Tesla was able to walk around inside of his Faraday cage while the devices were on and sometimes even get touched by the, the bolts and not have any kind of harm come to him. It's his own firsthand reports. Again, pictures of him standing right next to it as it's firing. So, you know, of well, course here, now. Here's don't hear about, I mean, you're hearing about the laser weapons, but Tesla melted metal in his hands while holding it, which is what they can do when they can melt bullets. You know, they can, they can melt, melt them in the package at the store. No laser needed, just a, just a sound wave. Have you heard of the lily wave? No, no, I have not heard this. The lily wave, what is this? It's a compound wave that they put on the, you know, they can ride this on any kind of frequency. They put it on, it's on all the electrical. They put the device inside the power plant, which puts out this lily wave. And that's how they actually do the mind control or mess with their emotions. You ever feel like you're just getting super emotional and you don't know why? 
That's the Lily Wave. Yeah, do some research into that. You'll, uh, you know, you'll you'll just be astonished. And for those of our listeners who, who you know, don't believe that the mind can be influenced using radio frequency or sound wave, sound, even sound waves, actually, they've even found. Um, but our body itself is made up of electromagnetic discharge. Um, each cell is producing its own electromagnetic field. Every cell in your body combined, you have a, a combined actual electro static presence your own force field it only extends maybe an inch or two from your body but you know how when somebody comes close to you and you can feel it that is not just a feeling of close air that is actually a feeling of electrostatic discharge which means your body carries its own magnetism (laughs) and it sounds like my cat agrees with me on that (laughs) Look up how far away your heartbeat can be detected. Well, Well, I wouldn't even know. I guess it would depend on the the sensitivity of your um, detector. I would assume that they could do it with a satellite even, maybe. You can pick the heartbeat up from almost a mile away. I'm not really? shocked by that at all. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they can pick up a Wi-Fi router from eight miles away. And that's 2.45 gigahertz at yeah, uh, a few microwatts. How would you be able microwatt. to pinpoint the heartbeat that you want to hear if it's a mile away? You'd be hearing Electric, squirrels. The, electric, and- the electrical frequency that's inside you. Yeah, everyone's frequency is just a little bit off. You know, so you can tune into an exact person oh. once you match their frequency you have it um you know you're you're nothing but electric and magnetism so well i'm constantly changing my frequency <laughs> well you know it, the real question Not would then true. become how how does one's person detect your own frequency what frequency is your body resonating at and then that takes us into some strange some strange Scientology type beliefs, where you know you you hold the, the, the thing and it tells you whether or not you've got the thetas in you. Um, that is something that somebody should devise at some point. A thermometer, you can uh, a body thermometer to figure out what frequency your body is actually operating on. You if see, our, I mean, it has to be. They already something. have it. Or a photo. Your aura photo gives away your frequency with light. Have you ever seen Carillion photography? Um, this is where somebody will take a um, an exposure photograph where you can see the electrostatic auras of different things. Fruits, vegetables, plants, animals, people. And it's very, very interesting to see people's auras, as we would call them. And you can. You really can. It's a scientific process. There's, you know, each each object is giving off its own electrostatic discharge. And, um, you know, we got three callers left on the phone, and I've got 14 minutes. Tonight has just been kind of one of these discussions, guys. It's, you know, this is, to me, it's very intriguing to discuss possibilities of strange esoteric possibilities in science. Um, it is. It's thought-provoking. People, yes. Very, very much is. Um, well, that's uh, next week. Definitely, definitely. And we'll be, we'll be talking more, again, on the topics in general of radio frequency and weather modification next week when I pick back up on radar. Um, I knew tonight was going to kind of be this um, more of a discussion about possibilities. Because hey, God be one. If you, could, if you got any links, if you could send it to me on my Facebook, I'd appreciate that. Uh, I'm, I'm restricted from Facebook. Uh, I'm not allowed to be on Facebook. Or my YouTube. It'll be fine. <laughs> Whichever you can send it to me, it'd be I great. Can, oh, me and me and Google government don't get along, so I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm I'm restricted from Facebook. So <laughs> okay, I got you. I understand. I think I, okay, and look it up. It's under God be one, but I'm not. They they deny me access. <laughs> 
Well, I wouldn't be surprised the way you taught the stuff you just said. I wouldn't be surprised at all. They don't want right, to talk bro, about you're that talking, in You're talking moon either, landing. So. You're talking interdimensional travel. Be prepared for the complete smackdown from Big Brother. That's just, oh, my gosh. Uh, but, you know, again, topics that we need to discuss. They, they know what I know, and I know what they know. So it, it's all the same. That's right. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for thank you for calling, man. Um, we do have three more callers on the phone now. This next person, it says uh, unknown. They have to introduce themselves. Wow! Wow! This is an unknown caller. Hi, I'm Robert. What's your name? Robert from Phoenix. Robert. Yes. Hello, hello. How are you doing, brother? Hey, great. It's great to meet you, to hear you guys on the radio. I've been watching you for a long time, and I am really proud of you guys. Oh, cheers, man! It's always good to get a compliment. It really is. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I I have one small thing that I'd like to throw in there. Anytime you talk about Tesla, you have to mention that J.P. Morgan shut him down because there's no place to put a meter. There was no place to charge you for this electricity he was giving out. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And that's why the whole project got shut down. Oh, since you brought up that guy, J.C. Morgan, there is a new money running out there, guys. I don't know if y'all heard about this. I just heard about it today myself, and I still got to do some research on it, about new money. It has something to do with transferring of money, and we're already using it and don't even know it. It's invisible money. Debit? I, I, I just heard it. I yeah, ain't, I just it. credit. <laughs> it's wild. It's, it's, it was way out there. I, I couldn't listen to the whole thing. I got to go listen to the rest of it. But that was it was kind of weird. Well, but it's, it's funny it's that you mentioned money. that, Robert, because we were talk, talking about J.P. Morgan and Tesla before the show started, weren't we, guys? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, the bankers, see... Banking and energy go hand in hand. You could just say energy is money, and money is energy. Yeah, it's it's the driving force behind what and runs up, so like gasoline, to right? You know what I mean? Ought to be, if you can uh, create a electron of electricity, and that's what we ought to be sharing instead of uh, cash, because uh, it needs to be something based on some kind of value that can, everybody can use and everybody can create, so there ain't no hoarding of it. But, I think that a lot of the um, weather manipulation and stuff like that is pretty crazy, and I don't think they really need harp anymore. I think they can do everything with these antennas that they have all over town, everywhere you go. Um, and I believe I'm trying to. I'm going to give out an invention to the world uh, right now. If you guys um, are enterprising and you want to make a billion dollars, please rem- remember me when I give this to you. Now the. Um, NASA and JPL in 1975 did the experiment. They were able to transfer wireless power using 2.45 gigahertz and a radar dish at 500,000 watts. They were able to transfer. Oh, yeah, they're doing it now. They're they're pumping up energy. They're sending natural gas and the electricity up into the air, shooting it back down to wherever they need it. But they can't charge us for it, so they're not going to tell us about it. If they could, they'd be bragging about it. Yep. Yeah. Now, here, here's the way it'll work, guys. If you want to make this or if you want to make this invention, it's so simple. Already out floating around in the air right now coming from the National Weather Service is 2 gigahertz at 500,000 to 750,000 watts free floating out there in the ether. And all you have to do is make a receiving antenna that runs to a tube and the tube then runs to a battery bank. And the microwave frequency is picked up by the antenna, goes to the tube, the tube lights up, produces electricity, sends the DC current down to your battery bank, and you've got free wireless power at your house for as long as you want it, as long as there's free-floating ambient energy out there. All you got to do is make it. Yeah. There it is. Listen back to you this broadcast, guys. If you're yeah. an inventor, you can do it. Yep. Y'all were talking at the Hello? same time. What'd you say, yeah. Robert? 
I think you have to, if you invent that, you have to give it to the world for free, because if you try to get any money for it, they're just going to bury it. Whoever buys it from you is going to bury it, and they'll never see the light of day. I just gave it to the world, bro. <laughs> Somebody can make it. Yeah, seriously, I seriously, it'll I, work. I, I it really will. I promise. I hope somebody does it. And maybe it'll quit radiating us and killing us. They found out how to like take the energy out of the air a long time ago. <laughs> but I don't think everything works as good as they say it does. Your know, submarines run a, run aground. Um, you know the airplanes can't land on an aircraft carrier because they put the tr- tail hick in the right in the wrong place. Um, yeah. The technology is good, but I think it's being sold to them at the top, you know lowest bidder. Definitely. They, they, they will uh, pay the least and charge the most. That's rule number one of the U.S. corporation, guys. Seriously, it's to make the most off you, you and me. We together. got six more minutes and we got two more callers. I don't think we're going to make but one, but we need to try. All right, we got one more call. Hey, right, well, again, th- thank you for calling in. Um, again, call in next week. We'll be having a much deeper conversation on this. Um, thank you, Robert. Right, Cheers, bye. bro. Cheers. Bye bye. We have Ali next. Ah, Ali. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Welcome back, sir. Hey, thanks so much for taking my call. You guys appreciate it. And, uh, great night. Uh, I learned a lot so far, that's for sure. Um, just wanted to make a real brief tonight. I forgot to mention it last week on air. Um, I've been. I've been testing the rainwater, or what, if you want to call it rainwater, out here in Southern California. And we are about five, six miles away from the ocean. And when I look up natural water, it's got to be somewhere around 7.0, I believe, on pH. Yes. And um, so there's, there's not too much pollution around us. And... And actually, um, we're surrounded by trees where we're at. But I've been testing this water, and it's coming out 5.0, at most 5.5. And this That's is the acid rain. glass put outside. That's acid rain. Oh, that? That's a low pH. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And this is from like the heavy cami days, which has been for a while. Um, and anyone could do this. The reason I'm calling and bringing it to attention is I want everyone who's listening to just get a pH test from your local store and try this for yourself because it's just happening all the time and I haven't got anything above 5.5. Wow. And so over a long time, those who are gardeners and farmers, this is just happening over and over. So I realize you... You discuss about um, defense project, but is it worth it to the cost of farmland and making everything acidic, not to mention all the other perhaps metal particles and plastic? I don't know what's in it, but it should not be 5.5 over and over where we're at, just right off the coast. Um to have that kind of, you know, drop. I could see if it were downtown L.A. or somewhere really toxic, those plumes in the air could affect the pH, but where we're at just doesn't add up. So, and, you know, and then tomorrow they're going to discuss about, you know, global warming, which you would prove that it's false, and doing it to protect us. But, again, my concern is pollution in the soil, which can affect, our farms and foods and everything, pretty much. Yes. So I just want to encourage people to test test out themselves. Your snow melted, just pH, because to you get other stuff, other testing, it's going to be very, very expensive. I understand that. But at least we could see pH of it and just imagine over time. It's, it's a lot of acidification of the soil. So I will. Um, I'll do the test this week. Up to you guys. I, I will. Um, this week, I've got a pH test kit um, downstairs un, unopened, and I will go uh, outside yeah. this week and get 
a few tests, and I will report next week what our pH is here. Um, uh, acid acid rain so is we a have huge a natural, problem. Yeah, we have a pond in the backyard, natural flowing pond. I test that; it comes way above seven. And you could I test my tap water. That tap water without any filter is coming around just around seven. And then this condensation from air, rain, just fresh as can be, it's like 5.5. It's like, wow. Right. This is, uh, and again, guys, the, the lower the pH, the higher the ac- acidity. We're talking acid rain here, um, chemical rain. It might explain why the trees are looking a little bit withered lately, wouldn't it, everybody? When you, yeah, when you drive that's, around. Yeah, that's exactly around. what happened here. Remember but I that- told you when they were spraying the, uh, the uh, Gulf oil spill? They were spraying that chemical out there. Our trees here were burning leaves. I got a video on it where the leaves were actually had holes burning it. And the tops of the trees around here for about two years looked dead. I'm not surprised. You know, I've noticed something, guys. You can drive around. Um, if, you, if you drive around, take a look at your uh, subdivisions, at the roofs and the houses. And you'll start to notice a staining that's occurring, a dark black stain. And, you know, we don't even have time to go into it, guys. It's been a great show. I hear music already. Tune in next week. We will have uh, a continuation on this discussion. Ali, Robert, Gabby One, Greg, thank you all for calling in. It was pleasant talking to you. We'll talk to you next week, guys. Have a good week. The Stacked, 1871. Thanks for listening to FPRN. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to start your own show with FPRN, advertise with us or donate to the network or to your favorite shows, check out our website at www.fprnradio.com.